to talk about Dave Chappelle's new special that he put out, 846. 8 minutes, 46 seconds is the time uh, that um, Officer Derek Chauvin had his knee on George Floyd's neck. 8 minutes and 46 seconds. Um, so I want to kind of go through the show and because I did this with uh, Chappelle's special when he put it, when he put out the new special that a bunch of people had problems with and I kind of itemized through like the different jokes and stuff so and it's something that I enjoy doing I'm very analytical about about this sort of stuff like I, I have a weird analytical brain that's just how my head operates and this special is is very powerful it's an incredibly incredibly powerful special uh, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend watching it. I, I saw, I watched it twice. I watched it on Friday when it came out, um, and I watched it again this morning. Um, paid a little closer attention uh, to it. So um, here's here's one of the things you know. So before we get into the special, there's there's a little pre-roll, right? Like because it's kind of set up like a thirty-minute movie. Um, and it's very, I mean, it's very well done. It's very well done. And I got to say, even even when we get into the, the performance part of the show, like the fact that you can hear a little bit of the echo from the open space that he's in adds to what it, what this special actually is. Um, I, I thought the production value on this is, is phenomenal. It's really, really well done. So uh, the beginning of the show, you see a bunch of uh, staff that are kind of... Uh, you know, uh, working to ensure that there's social distancing in place, there's chairs with circles around it and stuff. Uh, they're in an outdoor kind of pavilion -y area. Um, and then there's people doing temperature checks, right? Uh, and I've heard that there's a bunch of venues that are doing that. The venues that are currently open right now um, are, are the larger venues that are doing these temperature checks. So one of the things I think we can immediately take away from this right off the bat is that right now, um, entertainment, live entertainment is for the larger venues and it's for, uh, the more rich folks that can afford to do live shows, right? Like Dave Chappelle is not, is not a low level comedian that is touring around 50 seat venues to, to earn a living, right. To, to, to just make ends meet like Dave Chappelle is doing pretty well. I would not be surprised if Dave Chappelle personally made sure that the, the people working at the park and at the pavilion and stuff that he was he was at got paid out of his own pocket. I'm not sure if he sold tickets to the show. I believe the show was recorded June 6th, which is not that long ago. So this was like a really short turnaround. Like they were like if they recorded it on June 6th and then they put it out what June 12th, that's 6 days. That's 6 days to to edit a what I'm assuming is a minimum of 3 camera shoot with with all of this staff and stuff right and it was two weeks after the death of george floyd to coordinate this thing like that's a really really quick turnaround to coordinate a whole show produce it film it and and then release it that's a really really short turnaround that's less than a month you guys like that's that's a crazy short turnaround um but it does show that like you kind of now need money in order to do a live entertainment thing that's 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 kind of what he did, right? Um, Chappelle can afford that sort of stuff. He can afford to pay the staff. He can afford to to pay for the equipment that that uh, um, you know people are using to take people's temperatures outside, wear the masks. Everybody got everybody got a Chappelle show mask, uh, which I thought was very cool. And it's like I would fucking wear one of those. I wear those all the time. That's that's rad as hell, right? So he's taking a lot of a um, lot of measures in order to make sure that uh, that you can do a live show like this. Um, one of the things I have heard, though, is that temperature checks are ineffective. Um, and so I'm not particularly sure. Like, doctors have come out and said temperature checks don't really say anything about COVID-19. They don't say anything about whether you have SARS-CoV-2 or not. Um, so if you're running, a, I mean, if you're running a fever, like, don't go see Dave Chappelle, you know. Like, just stay home. You'll be fine. Like, it's going to be okay. Like if you're if you're running a fever, don't come to see my live stand-up comedy. I'm gonna understand. I'll send you a fucking recording. You know what I mean? Like I'll figure out a way that you get the show. 
um, I'll send you a copy of my album. Like there's things that artists do in order to compensate for people that do get sick, that can't come, that, you know, so, uh, but the temperature checks particularly I've read are not effective. So I'm not sure why venues and why even, even Dave decided to do it. I know I'm nitpicking a little bit uh, on that regard, but um, as a, as, as somebody that, that, tour, that was touring for a living and now has shifted to a virtual space, to a digital landscape, um, you know, I don't think temperature checks are particularly the, 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 the way that you ensure safety. Um, the other things that, that Chappelle did with giving people masks and the six feet apart, the, the, the circles that he put on the ground, keeping a distance with, from everybody, uh, those are, I think, uh, a little bit more effective. But again, it kind of goes to show, like, unless you're a 250 to 300 minimum uh, seat venue, you know, we're not going to see live entertainment for a while, you know. And, and I was talking to a friend of mine. Um, I was talking to Mark Viola. I don't know if Mark's watching now or not, but uh, he's another uh, touring comedian. And we were talking about this exact thing, this exact thing. We were we were like, this is here's what's going to happen right is that these larger venues are going to open up and they're going to they're going to rely on the celebrity power of someone like a Dave Chappelle or you know uh a, a, a fucking who's the puppet guy Jeff Dunham yeah like the Jeff Dunham is going to come to the club and sell out 100 tickets you know with social distancing and masks and do his racist puppet show right or like Dave Chappelle is going to go and and do do a show where he's going to poignantly speak the truth uh, and and drop a, as he says in the special a couple of pussy jokes. Um, that I think is is sort of where live entertainment is going to go for a little bit until we see the cases spike back up again. And I do think that they're probably going to spike back up again. Um, and that's a that's a whole I, that's a whole different rant that I'm probably that I'm not going to get into right now. Um, but um, so uh, he gets up on stage and it says 87 days since he was on stage. And I mean, that's a long time for somebody to like not do comedy. Uh, I didn't, those virtual shows took me about a month to figure out before I ran a test show. Um, and I did, a, I did uh, Rob Green's Anderson comedy uh, at one point as well. And, you know, that was about a month into, uh, into the quarantine stuff. Um, and that, I mean, it was rough. Like I felt very unpolished and jittery and like now I'm a little bit more comfortable. Like I still do this shit, you know, but this is, this is just sort of looser and me just kind of talking. And if something funny happens, it happens, but this is just kind of me talking about the ideas and stuff. Um, 87 days is a long fucking time. It's a long fucking time to not be on stage, uh, or do anything sort of comedic. Um, and he said that, and he opens it up by saying that this is less than ideal. He kind of calls out the situation for what it is. And it is less than ideal. It's, it's going to be less than ideal for a while. Uh, so we all need to adapt. That's one of the things we're going to have to learn. We're going to have to learn to adapt. And, um, uh, he says, uh, he, he, he then says that he's excited that the young folks are in the front lines. Like he's taking a back seat and he, and he's cool with us, with the younger kids, with the younger folks, this younger generation taking the heat, taking the front of uh, the uh, the protests and the movement, right? And, uh, and and that's that's really what it is. In every generation, it's always been the younger cats that have uh, taken you know uh, taken lead of the of the movement. You know, uh, like the Black Panther Party was not created by a bunch of fucking uh, but like thirty year olds or forty year olds. You know, somebody that's closer to retirement. It was created by like 22 year olds. Bobby Seale and Huey Newton were like 22 when they fucking, and, and I might be overestimating their age at that point. Um, and they started, I mean, they were, you know, to, to, to talk about the civil rights movement and only make it about Mar MLK and Malcolm X and not bring up Stokely Carmichael, to not bring up the Black Panther Party, uh, you know, is, is kind of a disservice to the, to the civil rights movement, in my opinion. Um, but uh, to back to Chappelle, about two minutes in, uh, he puts his notebook down, right? Like he picks it up several times throughout the special, but he put, put, put the notebooks down. Like he's done with the notebook. Uh, two minutes in, and 
he 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 asks the crowd like if this is weird, like if they feel weird about it, which is kind of interesting to see that you have somebody at that upper echelon of comedy that still gets insecure about some things. You know, uh, I get I get insecure about it all the time, all the time, like almost every single time that I'm on stage. The show could be going amazing and about 40 minutes in, I'm like, is any, do you guys still give a shit about this? Like, are we still in the show? You know, and everybody's still, like, everybody's having a good time. Like, even the good shows, I'm like, are, do we care? Like, are you guys, do you guys still care? It's just a weird insecurity and I think it's a comic insecurity. It's a comic insecurity, it's a self-deprecation uh, where we feel like people don't like us. That, because that's sort of how society's uh, rooted in, and comedy is seen as this lower art form, which it's really not. But it's 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 not a lower art form. It's an art form for the people. It is a, it is it is. I think stand up comedy is one of the very very few art forms that is very specifically for the people. And there are comedians that have been co opted by the establishment, um, and and we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, it is very much a, a the people's art form. I think uh, so. Uh, then he tries to attempt to do some crowd work to break the ice, and then he just fucking goes into it. Like, he just drills right into it, right? He starts talking about the 90, 1993 earthquake uh, where where he was, like, freaked out about this earthquake situation. He goes into it, and he tells his story, and then he says that was 35 seconds, right? In 35 seconds, he basically made this decision about, like, getting up, grabbing his keys, grabbing his pipe, grabbing some food, uh, grabbing all his, a, a bunch of money, and he was, like, ready to fucking go. And that was 35 seconds of panic. Versus 8 minutes and 46 seconds. And that number is repeated, which is important. Because if 35 seconds was enough to make someone like Chappelle think that his life was over and he has to, he has to go into survival mode. Eight minutes and 46 seconds is, is infinity. And he points out how George Floyd probably knew that he was going to die. And, and there's a, there's a very good chance that he probably did know. And this is something that a lot of people have talked about, and Chappelle pointed it out. The cops thought they could get away with it. That's why they did it. That's why they continue doing it. Um, that's why you have the Buffalo cops resigning, not for the fact that uh, an elderly man was, an elderly peace activist was violently shoved to the ground and was bleeding out of his ears. That's not why those Buffalo cops resigned. They resigned because the two cops that shoved this old man got suspended and they were protesting the suspension of violent cops. They think they can get away with their violence. They think they can get away with their brutality. And when they don't, they react in the way that they're reacting now. And, uh, Chappelle points out that he didn't watch the video for about a week. He saw the photos. This is an argument I've had several times. I've I've watched uh I've watched several of these videos. My opinion kind of waxes and wanes on this on this topic of whether we should be watching these videos or not. I think they're important. Um, I got into an argument in uh, in the car a couple of years ago with my ex about this particular issue. We're, we're listening to a podcast about um, a, a story, and I can't, I wish I could remember the details, but I can't. And I would have to go and look for the podcast. But the podcast was about police brutality, and they were kind of trying to break down the subject. This was maybe 2017. And we got into a blowout because I listened to, to the audio, and I mean, the audio is heartbreaking and brutal enough. And I was, I, I basically was like, look, I have watched so many fucking people get shot by the cops and I don't know if I can do it again. And she kept saying like, no, we'll pull over at a, at a rest stop and we'll watch the video. Like we'll watch, let's just watch the video. And I was like, no, I kind of fucking don't want to, like, I don't want to watch this guy die. Like, I don't need to see another one of us get fucking murdered. I, I it's hard. And I don't feel like I'm up to it right now. And this became a huge argument 
about how I can objectively talk about it if I'm unwilling. And that's a good point, but it's also like, I don't want to watch one of my people get murdered. Period. It sucks. <laughs> that there, I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It fucking blows. It hurts. It hurts in, in, in unimaginable fucking ways. And that's what Chappelle was talking about. I, I mean, I eventually watched the video. I watched the I watched the entirety of the fucking video, and you know what? It, it it doesn't feel good. Like I didn't I didn't get I I wasn't just like boy, there's subtle nuances that I'm trying to figure out, and it, like it's not a fucking sports analysis. I'm not running play by plays. I'm not putting it on that dumb fucking board where they draw little circles and X's and arrows and shit. That's not. No, I watched a man get murdered on camera and we're having a fucking argument about whether the police need to be defunded and demilitarized. After we saw, I mean, like, like infinite amount of videos of people with black and brown skin get fucking murdered. And there's only so much of it you can take. So, and this was, I mean, this was like a blowout in the car, right? It was a blowout in the car. <clears throat> like, there was, I, like, I was trying to keep it together. And this was also, like, we were driving overnight. Um, so this was around around 3.30 in the morning. Uh, and I'm on, like, the third cup of coffee that I've had for that drive. And we still had about three and a half hours of driving to do. And, you know, we're, uh, she's basically arguing that I have to watch this video. And I was like, I don't fucking want, I don't want to watch somebody die. I've already heard it. And I, and I get that. I get why he didn't want to watch the video. I get that he saw the photo and that was it. I mean, how many times have we seen that photo? How many times have we seen the video of Eric Gardner getting illegally choked out? It's heartbreaking. It sucks. It hurts. And after a while, you don't want to watch any more of it. You know, it's happening. Like I've seen enough of it to know that it's a reality. And and really the discussion is, well, was he running away? Was, you know, did maybe he deserved to get shot. Really? That's the fucking discussion. He deserved to get shot. He deserved to have his fucking a 200 pound man on his uh, on his neck. That's a bullshit argument. So if you don't want to watch the video, don't watch the video. And, and for Chappelle, that's kind of what he points out in that moment. So then we move to Don Lemon, right? Um, Don Lemon points out how, uh, uh, where are all the celebrities? Where are all the celebrities? Why aren't the celebrities saying anything? And that's what corporate media does. Corporate media likes to co-opt the movement and, uh, and doesn't, and doesn't want to justify it. This is a very old tactic, by the way. Uh, they don't want to justify the movement by the people or a protest or any of this stuff by the people. Uh, unless there is a famous person to validate its reality, unless there's a famous person, some celebrity status person uh, to say, no, this is real. Black lives do matter, right? Like if it's just us on the ground, if it's just, if it's just somebody that, you know, that, 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 that marches on the streets, a, a regular day-to-day -day activist or a doctor that works at the hospital or a store clerk that works at, at, a, at a local bodega, if they say Black Lives Matter, it's easy for for these these media outlets to to say, well, no, it's not, and then they just show you fucking footages of riots and be like, is this is what Black Lives Matter means. It's like that's not the fucking. But if somebody like Dave Chappelle says it, then to them it's real, right? Only when it's one of them. Only when it's another rich person that says it. And Chappelle's response, and I think this is this is the fucking crescendo of the fucking piece is. Uh, this the, this is the street speaking for themselves. That's a powerful fucking statement. Only Chappelle can make this statement, though. Someone like Chappelle, anyway. It's basically Chappelle saying, hey, I don't fucking need to say anything, but I do have to say something to validate me not saying something. It, it kind of sounds like this weird clusterfuck of a statement. But like I just said, the only the only point in time where these these media conglomerates find any sort of validation in these movements is when there's a famous person that does it. What's Denzel think about it? 
What what's Denzel think about it? No one gives a shit what Denzel thinks about it. Never fucking cared about what Denzel thinks about it. You know what I find, what I get worried about? This happened to me um, on the June 5th show is, uh, uh, you know, at the end of at the end of these virtual shows, I'm doing these little Q&A's and stuff. And that show went on like it was it was long. It was covering the history of the Black Panther Party. So it was it was it was long. It was a long show. And at the end of it, you know, I, I noticed a couple of people had uh, filtered away and I got nervous <laughs> uh, that they hated it, that the show was too long. It was too intense and they didn't care about what was going on. And I got nervous about it. And I messaged them about it. Let's say Denzel Washington showed up to one of these shows, hypothetically. And uh, about 25 minutes in, he was just like, I got to get the fuck out of here. If Denzel left, I'd be like, all right, I don't give a shit. But if one of you that are leaving comments that watch these videos on a regular basis, if you, when you guys leave, that's when I care about it. That's what Chappelle's point now. And of course, Chappelle has to point it out to validate the fact that we are valid. <laughs> you know, this... So what is he? He points out, you, you know, he says, you trust me. And they do. And people trust comedians. People trust comedians. Like I said, we, this is the only art form that is for the people. We, we are for the people. I, I have no, I have no corporate interests. I really don't. I, I, I'm, I'm supported by you guys. When you guys make a donation, I'm supported by you guys. If you guys buy a ticket, that's you. That's, uh, that's not, that's not fucking Coca-Cola. That's not government fucking money. That's just you guys. It, this is an art form. So, like, this is one of the only art forms that is solely for the people. That's a reality. There's a reason why most of the people in my generation that are now in their 30s spend a majority of their teens and 20s watching the fucking Daily Show as their source of news. They trusted Jon Stewart a comedian over fucking Anderson Cooper because Anderson Cooper has, uh, has investors and advertisers to worry about. So did John Stewart and John Stewart got in trouble. Uh, when he started making fun of Arby's there, there was, a uh, um, it was, he got in trouble at, until Arby's figured out that they can make money off of it. But, but John, but the reason why we trusted John Stewart over Anderson Cooper was because, John Stewart called out both sides of the argument. And then, you know, the, the flames of McCarthyism get reignited, uh, you know, and people's opinions get in the way. So when you have people, I, you know, there's a part of me that you could, you could claim is, is partially biased. But I don't, I don't know. I don't know if, you know, if I am or not. I, I don't buy into the conservative side of the argument. I also don't buy into the neoliberal side of the argument. Um, I, I look more towards stories and things that are not, but people come here to, 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 for whatever reason, there's, there's some people that value what I have to say, which is awesome. And it's great that you do, but there is a reason why we trust comedians over, over Don Lemon and Anderson Cooper and Rachel Maddow and Tucker Carlson and, um, some old fuck named Stuart Varney. <clears throat> my the uh, opening to my album was basically pointing this out. I, I talk about how I'm tired of the lies, right? And I basically point out how many times in our society we are actually lied to, um, and and it's basically like me. It's it's the reason I wrote it the way that I wrote it was because I just want people to know, like I'm not trying to lie to you. I'm not trying to manipulate the truth in some way, shape, or form. If if there is somebody that I trust and respect that I'm going to talk about, but they have failings as well. I'm going to point that out. You know why? Because we're all he fucking human beings. I have no reason to lie to people. I have no reason. I'm not the, 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 the when I talk about the black Panther party, like I pointed out the fact that Eldridge Cleaver after Martin Luther King Jr. Was killed, went out to hunt for cops because to them, hope had died. Hope had died. So when you take hope away from people, they do extreme things. Do I do I th think that what Eldridge Cleaver did was right? No, I don't. But it, it, and it led to the death of Bobby Hutton, who was the first Black Panther that was killed. <laughs> like I talked about that. If if I had a bias, I would just not bring that up. 
I would just not bring that up. They're all people. They're all human beings. They're all going to make mistakes. They all have emotions that they have to contend with. So on that point, what, what, what Chappelle's really saying makes that in with these streets are speaking for themselves. It's literally him saying like, we need to listen to all levels. We need to listen to people at all levels. And I'm not just saying that as like, I've been saying this shit for years and nobody fucking cared and blah, blah, blah. No, it's, it's literally a famous person validating all of the shit that, that various different comedians, various different journalists have been talking about for years. For years, they've been talking about it. And it's basically, like, no, it's time to listen to this on every level. And now we're saying it from the bottom to the top that these streets are speaking for themselves. And when you stop listening, shit's going to turn bad. And then he talks about Chris Dorner. Uh, I learned about Chris Dorner from a rapper called P.O.S. Uh, he's a Minneapolis rapper, and he has a he has a line in one of his songs called uh, "Superposition slash, slash Sleeper Drone." I think is the same, but I, the song's called "Superposition." Um, it's the it's the closer to the album "Chill Dummy," and uh, he basically says, "I'm Chris Dorner. I'm Doberman Dirty Off Leash." And if you if you listen to the story of Chris Dorner, who's basically a cop that felt like he did the right thing and was and was kicked out of the system. And then he personally was like, well, now I'm gonna, what, what, did, what did Chappelle say? I'm gonna wage unequivocal war on the LAPD. Um, I, I might be fucking up the quote, but, but that's what happens. You took hope away from Chris Dorner who felt like he was doing the right thing. He's that proverbial good cop that was there to serve and protect his community. And when he saw somebody violating that serve and protect oath and went and told a superior and then got fired, what do you think is going to happen? And then how does that story end? It ends with uh, they find him at uh, Big Bear and 400 police officers came in and, and, and murdered the fuck out of him. The quote is, one of their own was murdered. How can they not understand what's happening in these streets? One of our own, several of our own, several of our own. So then he goes through the whole history, right, of, of police killings and shootings. Uh, we go, we go uh, uh, Eric Garner, Trayvon Martin you know, Mike Brown, um, he brings up, a, a, I should have written this gentleman's name down, but the, the gentleman in Beaver Creek that was killed. Uh, and then eventually it led to the nine Dallas cops getting killed by a black military veteran, uh, another four cops getting killed. And then he circles it back to Chris Dorner. That's the first thing I thought when he brought up, I was just like, holy shit, that's, that's what, that's, it's, it's Dorner happening all over again. It's 1993 repeating in, in, in 2014 or, or what? Is that 2014? 2014, 2015, whenever, whenever those Dallas cops got murdered, killed. It's just, it's the same thing. I mean, how can you not understand that? But nobody talks about Chris Dorner. That's not taught in schools. That's not, that's not part of the, uh, uh, of, of the dialogue. No one's, no one's taking a nuanced look at what happened to Chris Dorner. He brings up the Black Panthers. The only time that the Republicans ever ran a gun restriction law was in 19, uh, 1967. It was called the Panther Bill. Um, I released a whole video talking about this just the other day. Um, and again, it's like, I'm not saying, I said it first. It's like, no, history fucking said it first. It's just people are people have been talking about this stuff. Um, and, and people are now talking about it on every level. We're we're talking. I'm 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 the I'm the fucking lows. I'm a nothing and a nobody talking about the Black Panthers, and then Dave Chappelle, the echelon of comedy, is also talking about the Black Panthers. <laughs> you know, it's just, I'm I'm saying it's available now in all different levels. You know, it's becoming unignorable, is what that is. The final thing that he says, the final thing that he says, is. Um, these streets will speak for themselves, and this is the last space for civil discourse. This, this is not a special. This is a final warning, and I'm not sure if Netflix realized that because I, I think Netflix is one of the channels that it got released on. 
this is not a comedy special. This is a final warning. It's a final warning to the establishment that if they don't start listening and start doing what they are elected to do, which electoral politics is all fucked too, but the general idea of being an elected official is that you are a representative of the people. And if you don't start listening to us, if I may quote Chappelle, it's rat a tat tat to tat tat to tat. This is the final warning. How many of us have been talking about this shit? For how long now? This is not a, a, a 2010s issue. This is not a 1990s issue. It's not a 1961 issue. This is a country issue. This is the birth of your country comes from this. The history of policing is slave patrols. How can you take slave patrols and say that you're going to serve and protect people in the community? You can't. You fucking can't. There is a fundamental shift happening in society. And we are willing to go through the, the, the avenues of civil discourse. We've been, we've been begging for it. People like me have been saying, hey, here, this is a systemic problem. I will use comedy as a vehicle to address this problem and have the civil discourse of what we can do to, to shift the, you know, change the direction of all this. And it goes ignored. And now somebody up at the top, somebody from their class, the upper class, they're saying it. Chappelle's saying it. This is a final warning that if you don't listen, this is it. This is the, this is, you have room for civil discourse. If it doesn't go beyond this, we will step out of the way to let whoever wants to take hold, burn this thing to the ground. And then we together will rebuild from the ashes. That's what we'll do. Let's look at some comments, guys. <laughs> uh, glad you're talking about Chappelle. I wanted to know your opinion. Yeah, uh, I, I hope I hope uh, I hope it came through. I hope it came through. Thanks for watching, Vinny. Uh, Dave said it best. He did say it best. He's he was very succinct about it. It was very raw. This was very raw. This was a, a, a this was not a rehearsed thing. It was, it was quite raw. Uh, Jay Jackson, welcome back, Jay. I got a. Put my head above your comment. Uh, I listened to a podcast called Code Switch that recently talked about how watching these videos have desensitized us because nothing has really changed. It keeps happening. Um, and we keep watching. And after a while, it becomes tor torture porn of a sort. That is kind of what I felt. Um, and it's very difficult for me to watch them. Um, I watched the George Floyd thing. And then I was like, I don't know if I can watch any more of it. Like it, it, like it was super difficult to fucking watch, and it just, it just kept pissing me off. Um, I watched one this morning that popped up. There's a gentleman by the name of Sean King. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Sean King, uh, but Sean posts a lot of uh, police brutality videos. That's that's one of the major issues that he is an advocate for, um, and it's hard to fucking watch. I mean, I watched one, I, it popped up on, on the Instagram feed and I was just like, this is crazy. Like, this is crazy. And, and honestly, like, I don't know how much more I'm probably going to be able to watch. Uh, it hurts. It sucks. It sucks. I don't, I, I, I don't want to be desensitized to it. Like that's, that's it. No matter how many times I watch one of them, like it fucking hurts. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I think uh, Jen, Jen, you're right. Unignorable is the goal. That is our goal. We should, we should, um, we should try to be unignorable. This is all part of our history, but we've ignored our history by bringing it back up constantly and and kind of making sure that people know it. It becomes unignorable. I wish civil discourse worked. I hate violence, but I can't. Uh, condemn doing whatever it takes to stop this. I agree with you. I mean, I'm I'm a pacifist. I'm not one. Uh, I was just talking to my sister today 
um, about, you know, gun ownership. And, and there's been a couple of people that were like, hey, if you want to buy a gun, uh, I'll, I'll help you buy one and I'll, I'll help you learn how to use it. And I'm not going to lie, I kind of gave it a thought. And uh, I don't know. Um, I'm not it's it's not for me. It's just I'm not wired that way. Uh, but I gave it a thought. Because we're talking about the military firing on its people, and we have a history of doing that. They blew up an entire black neighborhood in Philadelphia, Tulsa, Blair Mountain, uh, Pullman Strike of 1894. The list goes on and on. We've used the military on our own people before. Um, Kent State, Boston Police Strike of 1919. This is, I mean, the, I, I can keep going. We use military force on our people, and that's uh, that is going to have a very specific reaction. Uh, and we're, we're already getting reports of armed people showing up at the protest to protect protesters from the police. That's what the protests are about. That's what the defund the police movement, it, you know, if to, to, I know I'm boiling down a pretty complex issue, but kind of we want the police to be demilitarized we don't want to be afraid of the police anymore they should be serving our community your your job should be compartmentalized why are guys for guns show guys with guns showing up to at a traffic stop or to take care of a domestic dispute or because your neighbors are playing the music too loud that's fucking stupid there's no I, I like i don't i don't have any other clever ways of saying it i'll think of it later like when I'm writing a piece about defunding the police, which is coming up, which I'm which I'm working on now. Like I'll think of something like more poetic and and fun to say. But right now I'm going to be fucking blunt and say it's fucking stupid. And you know we want the stupidity to end. The streets will speak for themselves, and this is the this is the last space for civil discourse. Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure you hit that like button. You share it around with some friends, maybe with some enemies, you know, people that you really think would enjoy uh, video content like this. And make sure that you are subscribed and you hit that bell to get notifications when I put up more videos. Uh, there are going to be a ton of videos coming out on this channel. I release a few videos every single week. I do a couple segments called Forkful of Noodles, where we talk about ideas, history, philosophy. I do more ranty videos uh, called Road Reflections, where I talk about news stories, current events, uh, that sort of stuff. And then The Dispatch, which is uh, which are also current event written news, and they are a portion of my uh, audio interview podcast called Taboo Table Talk. So if you enjoy those sort of things, this is the channel for you. Plus, there'll be some some stand-up footage that I will be putting up as well. So there is regular content that goes up. Uh, and uh, if you want some alternative, independent, socially conscious, radical comedy, this is the channel for you to be. I mean, I, I don't know why you haven't hit the subscribe button already. I feel like you should have hit it maybe six or seven times at this point. Uh, so, so if you enjoy that sort of stuff, uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.